Everybody hello from outside of NRG Stadium, Randy McAvoy, Chancellor Johnson, and our Texans contributor for ClickToHouston.com, Aaron Wilson. Uh, day one, post the Lovey Smith era is, uh, is underway. We just all got out of the locker room to deal with the players. How about some additional takeaways, guys? It didn't seem like a lot of shock for the players that Lovey Smith was out there. Yeah, you know, for us, it wasn't much of a surprise. But talking to some of the players, they thought that he'd potentially be around a little bit longer, but as we talked about earlier, this is a results-based industry in the NFL, and three weeks isn't good enough, especially with the predecessor at the last night. Aaron, were you surprised it happened last night? as opposed to today. I wasn't surprised that they ripped the mandate off. I think they didn't want to have the awkwardness of players being asked a lot about something that was unsettled. So in a way, it's somewhat strategic. And when you know, you know. And they've known. They knew they were going to go in this direction. Uh, as we were reporting, this was something that was going to happen. And a lot of the reason is because of the disconnect between Lovey Smith, the communication, and not really embracing some of the more modern things the organization wants to go toward in the future, and right now included. And I think that's one of the reasons that you don't see Lovey Smith. It's not just the results, it's also the behind the scenes stuff. And that was a factor in his dismissal. All right, uh, the players are cleaning out their lockers, speaking for a little while longer inside, but let's, let's move forward because it's, this organization is moving forward now. We're gonna hear from Cal McNair and Nick Casario later today. They're scheduled to speak at 5.30. What do you think, guys, we're going to hear from them today? How much information will they give up? And, and then I want to follow that up with the, you, sorry, with you, Aaron, on maybe some coaches' names that are out there. We'll start with you, Chancellor, on what do you think we might hear about 530 today? <laughs> well, if it's anything like we've heard from Nick Casario in the past, it's probably not much. But there's a lot of questions to be answered uh, from the general manager, Nick Casario. This is his potentially third hire going into this offseason. And he hasn't been able to get it done the past two, obviously, uh, the past two interviews that he's had. They weren't candidates that others have interviewed. So get up, it's a big offseason. They have two first round picks coming up. They have a lot of capital, and you can turn things around quickly. So Nick Casario has to get this offseason right. We'll hear from him, but you know, we'll talk a lot about this program as the word that he likes to use. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we should find out later on this afternoon. Aaron, why why should Cal McNair moving forward with the important decisions that have to be made? He's obviously Nick's in that spot, that GM spot. He still trusts that he can get the it's job okay. done. These are some big decisions coming up for Nick Casario. Right. Ultimately, you have to go back to why did you hire Nick in the first place? Because he's smart, because he's detail oriented, because he's a hard worker, because he has a background with a winning program smart, with the tough. Patriots. Is that yeah. Yeah. Smart, really? And that, that is who he is. I think they haven't aimed high enough, and this team was never really built to win. If anything, David Culley should have just gotten the two years, and then when you're ready to, once you have the cap space, say thank you for your time and move on. Yeah, it's just it, it's been poor decisions that have led to this point while you know they're now at another standstill they're just trying to reset reboot whatever you want to call it and now you've got to find the right leader and they need someone as a, one source said to me you need someone high level like Nick where it's two guys they're scrimmaging back and forth they have some kind of mesh there's a better chemistry and I haven't felt that chemistry at all with the last two coaches with him and just even though they say all the right things the behind the scenes, the actual functionality hasn't been that functional. All right, as we wrap it up, a lot of people are saying, all right, what direction will they go? What names are out there? You're already reporting some names. Let's talk about the names you're hearing and also opinions now, what style of coach they need to come in here. Just a good coach, a winning coach, whether he's offense or defense or even special teams. I'm looking at special teams guys, they need someone that can actually have a vision and command the room. Someone that can stand in front of these guys and be respected and also have an expertise on one side of the football that is very modern and cutting edge and that can work. And the names I'm hearing, Jonathan Gannon, who interviewed twice last year, made a great impression on them, really knocked it out of the park in the interviews. Yeah. He's again someone, and there's mutual interest, it's shared. And another one is Detroit Lions offense coordinator, Ben Johnson. Neither have been a head coach before, but Ben has really orchestrated a great turnaround of the Lions offense, very creative play caller, has a few connections here including Ronnie McGill, the director of player personnel for the Texans. They were teammates in North Carolina. He's a walk-on quarterback. He's got some things going for him in terms of intelligence and I think play calling. He's just really, if you look at what he did with Jared Goff, he really turned Jared around. Yeah. I would trust him with a young quarterback because he's very, very good. All right, Chancellor, what, what do you think on, uh, you think they need a coach that is on the cusp of being that first time head coach that has the high upside or a a veteran proven guy that might be out there 
that can come in with that experience. What do you think? I like the word that Aaron used, the word moderate. If you look at the past two hires here, Davis Kelly, the guy who's been in the league for a really long time, but he's an older gentleman, and so is Lovey Smith. And, and his biggest accolades kind of go back to in the past, uh, the past few years, but there's so many bright, young-minded coaches out there. To me, I want to see an offensive-minded guy. The reason being is because they're going into this draft, more than likely going to draft potentially franchise QB. Yep. I would like to see them pair uh, pair that young QB up with another offensive-minded coach who can they can grow together in this program that Nick Casario likes to talk about a lot. And uh, an example I used last night is you know, look at Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. Now, granted, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, they don't grow on trees, but that is a good modern to kind of build yourself off of. And I like to see that, especially if you go in the younger direction, to have some continuity there moving forward. All right, the process is beginning for the Texans. We are all over it. Click to Houston.com and KPRC2 and 2+. Plus. Uh, more reaction coming in from inside the locker room. A little bit later today we'll have the press conference for you with owner uh, and CEO Cal McNair and GM Nick Casario. will bring you what their, their comments and what they're saying about the process as they move forward now turning the page with the organization. Great conversation, Aaron. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Aaron Wilson, Chancellor Johnson, Randy McAvoy. We'll talk to you soon from NRG.